realize that the patient um, has passed and needs to be removed from support, um, the biggest thing is just to keep this as quiet as possible because you have to disconnect three different um, areas of the LVAD, okay? There's two power connections and then there's the actual drive line which is connected to the patient. So the trick with this is just keeping it as quiet as possible with the mute button that's here on the bottom, okay? So the first thing um, that I'll generally do is remove them from power, both power sources, okay? You twist. Yep. This will spin until it spins freely, and then you pull straight out. And it's hard. It it's is hard. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. So you have a few seconds before it will start to alarm, and I just hit that alarm button. Take off the second power source. And I can usually get to the, the silence button before it ever beeps. Okay. Okay. The tricky one is removing the drive line, okay, because that's going to create a very loud, immediate, blaring alarm. In order to remove the drive line, you have to turn the controller over. So what I do is I keep my finger on this silence button as I turn the controller over so that I know where it is and how to silence it without looking at it, okay? There's a latch here on the back. This is the door to the eject button, okay. and that's always closed on the patients because we don't want this drive line coming out. Now you do have to actually press the eject button in order to pull out the drive line. So with a finger on the silence button and a thumb on the eject button, push down and pull straight out. And push the alarm as you are pulling out. And silence immediately when you get that drive line out, okay? And it may alarm again, but as long as you've got your finger on that silence, you can usually do it pretty quickly to get it off. So now you're completely disconnected from the patient and from the power. Okay, at that point you can actually turn this controller off and it's the battery button on top and you'll hold it and let it count down until it until it's off. Okay. okay? And it'll show you the countdown on the front. And this is off and it will not alarm anymore. Okay. And generally if I'm able to, I'll take this out of the room before I turn it off because it does sound like alarms that they deal with. Um, which is kind of distressing in the end. If not, I'll pass it off to somebody who can take it out of the room and turn it off. Okay. okay. And guys, at the house, they're going to have a machine that has numbers on it. Mm -hmm. um, and they could be hooked up to the large battery that's actually plugged into the wall. So mm -hmm. it's not going to look like these two things. Mm -hmm. It'll still have the two lines. You'll still have to disconnect in the same way. Um, mm -hmm. And... Is it true that whenever you go and visit the patient, um, what we've done in the past is like we'll record the numbers that are on the machine, mm -hmm. and then as they start to de like fall, mm -hmm. the patient's starting to decline? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, especially the PI. Okay. The PI is essentially their blood pressure. Okay. So the PI and the flow, which is at the actual liters per minute blood flow, will start to fall as the heart starts to fail. And there's absolutely no pul pulse for these patients. Generally not. Okay. Unless they've had quite a bit of recovery from the heart, you will not be able to palpate a pulse. You will not be able to get a blood pressure in a healthy LVAD patient, much less a dying LVAD patient. Okay. They just don't have it. It's, it's a continuous flow device like a vacuum cleaner, and so there's no pulsatility of the heart at all. Okay. So Any that shouldn't be alarming. Anything else? Not that I can think of. Okay.